In this video, we will talk about a very important concept called as TDD or test driven development. Now many developers have different views about TDD and its usefulness. Now apart from those views, you know, let's not get uh, complicated in the first step itself. Many people are confused about what exactly is TDD. So in this video, we will first try to understand what is TDD. We will see a simple demonstration and finally we will talk about the advantages of TDD. Now the most important point to remember is TDD is not a technology. It's an approach. It's a thought process of thinking testing from a different perspective. Okay, so what do I mean? Now in a normal development scenario, what you do is that you first write the code and then you write the test case. But in TDD, you first write the test case before even write a single line of code. And then you write the code, you know, which will run against that test case. In other words, the process is something like this you can see on your uh, video. First, you write a, write the test case. Even if you, before even you go and code your component, you first write the test case, execute it and it will fail. Okay. Then you write enough code so that, you know, it will pass. Okay. After that, you know, you refactor it. Must be you add some more methods or you do something. Again, run the test case. Again, ensure everything is working. So in other words, you know, basically you first write the test case. It will fail. Then you pass the test case by writing some code to it. Then you, then you refactor, you know, until, uh, you know, you finish your coding. So let's see a simple example of how to actually do TDD. So let's assume that, you know, we want to create a maths component, a maths component, you know, which has add and subtract functions. So before even we go ahead and we start coding this maths component, as per TDD, we have to first go and write the test case. So I'm going to use a uh, VSTS, uh, you know, unit test project here. So I'm going to go and you can see that I have uh, selected the new project. I have clicked on this uh, test menu here and let's go ahead and first write the test case saying maths test project. So as per TDD, the first thing is you will not go and write a single line of code, but you will first go and write the test case. So that's my test project created. Now, as we said that, you know, this maths component is going to have two methods. One is to do addition and the other one is to do subtraction. Okay. So let's go ahead and write a test case, which will do test add. This test case will go and test the add function of our maths component. Okay. So we'll say here maths component obj is equal to new maths component. See now very one important point to remember here is that I have yet not created the maths component. I have yet not written a single line of code. But what I am first doing is I am going and writing the test case. Okay. So that's why you, know, you can see that there are lots of red signs here and that is fine, you know, because we have, we have yet not created the maths component. So I'll say here int result. So this maths component will have an add function. So I will pass him 10 and 10 and I expect a cert dot r equal, you know, this, uh, I expect, you know, value as 20 here because 10 plus 10 is 20 and the result is this one, right? So you can see that basically I have first gone ahead and I have written the test case. I have not yet written any line of code here and you know, I am now clear that what I'm expecting from my add function or from the maths component. So we have completed the first step. We have first written the test case and now let's go ahead and compile this project. So let me go and build the solution here. Now, definitely I'm mean, this project will not compile, right? <laughs> uh, but that's what, you know, uh, is important. So what, what it indicates now is that, okay, this test case has failed. You can see and uh, it's saying that basically there is no maths component created okay so now the next step is we have to go and create the maths component so let's go ahead and add a new project called as a maths component so let's go ahead and create a library here called as maths component so there's our class library so the first thing is let's go ahead and rename this class as maths component. Uh, I can see that I'm calling for troubles here because the maths namespace as the maths component is 
the class name is all is same. So let me go and rename this to maths namespace, you know, so that we don't end up into any kind of problems. Now uh, the first thing is we have to go and create a function called as add, which will actually take two numbers here. So int num one and uh, comma uh, int num two. So now you know what I'll do is you know I'm not going to write any code still. Okay, I'm just going to write saying you know return zero. In other words, I'm writing least amount amount of code you know so that at least at least you know that maths test project compiles. So my intention here is to not start writing actual logic but to just write enough thing you know so that the, the class test project at least compiles okay so let me go and reference this uh, class test sorry the maths component in the maths test project so i've done that and uh, let's go ahead and import the maths component namespace and uh, and you can see that everything is fine here right so now if I build my project, everything should compile, including the test project. So what we did first, first, you know, as per TDD, we did not write a single line of code, but we went ahead and we created the test case. We built, we then built the test case. It failed. The build failed. Why? Because definitely the component was not created. Then in the next step, we went ahead and we created the component, but we created minimal code. You know, so that at least we can go and compile a test project. Okay, and you can see that it is now done. Right. Now let me go and run this test case here. So I'm going to go and run my test case here. So test test view. And I'm going to go and say run this test case. Now, if I go and run the test case, right, obviously it will fail because there is no logic written still in the add function. And the add function is returning zero while I'm expecting 20. Okay. So now I would like to go and refactor my adds function to at least add function, you know, with some logic. Okay. So I'm going to go here and say, okay, let me put some code here. Num1 plus num2. Great. And now let me go and build the project. So there the project is built, done. Now let me go and uh, run my test. So definitely the test case should pass because uh, you know I've written the logic and it is now the logic is now returning me 20 and the test case is expecting 20. So everything fine. Now the next thing is we would like to go and uh, also implement the subtract function. Again the same thought process. Do not go and write first the subtract function. But first go and write the test case. So we'll do a control C here. We'll do a control V here. Let me just take this up. So we're going to say your test subtract. Again, the same thing. I'm going to say maths component obj equal to new maths component. And I'm going to say obj dot. I'm going to say first int result is equal to obj dot subtract 10 comma 10 let's say and what i expect here is assert dot r equal i expect value zero and uh, let's compare it with actuals right now again you can see that there is a red sign here because definitely there is no subtract function and that is fine so i'm going to go and build this and uh, it shows me I uh, you know saying that the subtract function is not implemented. So right, so our test case has failed. So now the developer has to go and implement a subtract function. So he goes back here, he goes back to his maths component uh, and he says, okay, I'm going to put here public int subtract int num1 comma int num2. And I'm going to say zero so that at least minimally the code compiles. I will build this. Now, even the subtract thing is not showing me errors. Now, let me go and run my test case again. So I'm going to say test view and say, yes, let's go and run both the test cases. So if 
I run them. Okay, now there's <laughs> okay. Uh, now you can see over here, you know, basically both the test cases have passed, you know. Why? Because uh, in the subtract, right, I have given equal numbers and uh, 10 minus 10 is 0. And, you know, here, <laughs> here I have written hard coded 0. So that's why the test case has passed. So let me just go and say here, okay, how about 10 and 9? So that should give me 1. Okay. So let me go and again build my solution here just to ensure that things are proper and uh, now let me go to test windows test view and say now let me go and say again run the selection so now you can see that okay uh, at least the compiling is now done but I can see that the test subtract has failed because he's saying that you know I'm expecting one and he's actually returning me zero okay so now again the developer goes to the class and implements the subtract function so it says num1 minus num2 right so again you go and now run the test case so again you say right click run the selection okay so you can see that how iterative the process is you first write the test case then you write the code then you run the test case if it is failed again you go and refactor the code again come back and write new new test cases so in tdd the most important part is you first write the test case and then you go and write the code. Now you must be wondering what is the advantage of TDD? What is the advantage of writing a test case first? You know, must be that some of the dev developers are amused by saying that, oh my God, I have to write first the test case and then the code. You know, isn't it time consuming? You know, and how does it add value? The first important value add here is, you know, at least I think personally is that it makes your intention clear. It changes your thought process just think you know if I would have said that okay go ahead and write your maths component must be you would have gone ahead and written it but you know with this approach what happened what happened here is that you first knew what you wanted okay and then you then you went ahead and you and you and you wrote your code so with this approach what's happening is your requirements are getting clear your intentions are getting clear so the first uh, what you call advantage is that your intentions are clear you understand the requirement very well okay so that's the first advantage of TDD the second big advantage of TDD is iterative development and testing now whenever we talk about software projects you know they evolve okay I means software projects don't happen overnight right I'm sure that people who have worked with bigger projects you know they would they would buy my point that they don't they don't just come from the app they evolve with every code they evolve right so here you saw in the mass project also you know how the code was evolving and by every code I, I was I was writing I was ensuring that I was running a test case and with this approach what happens is you have more confidence on the software you know that you are creating a good software right so the second big advantage of TDD is iterative development and testing okay so second point here is iterative development and testing the third important point about TDD is you catch defects in the early stages now I'm sure that you know everybody understands here uh, what is the what is the importance of catching a defect on the early stages if you let's say you know I'm just giving example if let's say that if there is a defect injected in the requirement phase for one defect injected in the requirement phase there will be 10 defects in the development phase for one defect which is injected in the technical design document you know there will be at least five defects in the uh, coding phase so in other words you know the earlier you catch the defect you know the better it is for the project now here you know by writing the test case in the early stages itself you know you are ensuring that you know you 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 can you know you are ensuring that basically you know you can catch the defects on the early stage itself okay so the third important advantage of using tdd is catching defects early the fourth advantage of TDD is that you are forced to write the test case or you are forced to write unit test cases now what happens is let's say that you know if you do not use the TDD approach what you will do is probably you'll go and create the maths project you will you'll go and write your add and subtract function 
you will execute the project and you'll probably go live and you'll never ever think about even writing unit test cases right but here you know with this approach you know you're forced to write the write the test cases which is again very good for you right so you are forced to write test cases okay the fifth advantage is that you know your code starts getting documented for example here i can you know when i look at this test subtract here you know i can understand that how i can use a subtract function so you know that is you know a, a kind of a self documentation you know starts evolving uh, you know by these test cases so i can say documentation right so you know these are you know some of the advantages of uh, you know tdd first one is that it makes your intention clear okay you understand your requirement well you know and with that understanding you know you have better interfaces created second you know the the development is more iterative you know with testing so in other words you know your code evolves and you know with every evolution you know you you actually test the code you catch your defects early third point you catch your defects early fourth point you know you are forced to write test cases which is good and finally you know there is a kind of a self documentation you know which evolves you know when you when you use tdd so these are like you know you know five important advantages you know which you get you know when you use tdd so just summarizing tdd is not a technology tdd is not a tool but it's a thought process it's a thought process you know where you write your test cases first you know before even you go and write your code uh, and, and and many of the people also call it as a a red green refactor process in other words uh you know you first write the test case so everything fails so it's red then you go and put some enough code over there so it passes and then after you afterwards you go and refactor it and you keep on running your test case until your project finishes so it's also called as you know the red green refactor process okay so i hope that you enjoyed this video in this video we were trying to understand what is what exactly is tdd we saw a small sample of a mass project how actually tdd evolves and tests your project and then we finally talked about you know some advantages of tdd so i hope that you enjoyed this video you know keep uh, seeing this testing section for more testing fundamentals thank you very much